Welcome to the Switch Clicks Podcast, episode 21, recorded on December 8th, 2020. Today we'll be discussing our predictions for the Game Awards, streaming live on December 10th. My name is Dakota, and today I'm joined by Nathan. Hello. Before we get started, I wanted to remind everybody that I'll be streaming the Game Awards on our YouTube channel, uh, with all our reactions starting around 7 p.m. EST. We'll see you there. And just another reminder that the voting for our Clicky Awards event is coming to a close on December 12th. Get your vote in and see the results on December 16th. So we're going to start off with our predictions. We have a few of the important categories to us, I guess. They're definitely not all of us. Uh, I think we took out all of the esports ones because, uh, honestly, we don't really care about that. Yeah, we don't really watch those. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, but we did put in most of the important ones that I, I'm going to assume most people care about. Uh, so the first one uh, we're going to talk about is Best Multiplayer. Uh, the nominees for those are Animal Crossing New Horizons, Among Us, Warzone, Valorant, and Fall Guys. Um, and I think both of us collectively, were, were, we're guessing that Among Us is probably going to win that. Yeah, we both went for Among Us. For multiplayer, I don't think Animal Crossing would win that, only because it does have a poor multiplayer, I'd say. Yeah, it's kind of really, really controlled there, or there's like a... How do, how do I describe it? There's a bit of a tense environment sometimes if, uh, if you know people are doing stuff that you don't want on your island and vice versa. Whereas in Among Us, it kind of has it kind of has like a static environment, but in a good way because no one's gonna, everyone's gonna expect you to act this way and not have to ruin any experiences. Everyone's going to do the same thing there, whereas in Animal Crossing, it's kind of just like... For sure. And Animal Crossing, I think, is only on Best Multiplayer because uh, it, it did have perfect timing uh, with the pandemic at the right at the beginning. And it was basically one of the only ways to connect to people at the time. Pretty much what I like to call the first pandemic game. But people are actually mad that Among Us is in this category because the game came out in 2018, which is understandable. But you could say that the game really had its its good start in 2020. So I think it, it deserves to be there to a point. Not to mention, I don't think there was anything specifically restricting it from being for, 20, for this year anyways. They, they simply said... Like, they simply gave us a due date, but they never said, like, what game, what dates these games come out. Other than, you know, after November 20th, but that's a different story. And uh, me and Carson have played a lot of Valorant this year, uh, but that was definitely just a trendy game for about a month where people were entirely addicted because they wanted to get into the beta. Uh, but the game has kind of uh, slowed down a bit. Uh, the only popularity is really the esports. Fall Guys was killed off by Among Us. Yeah, it has like less than a thousand people playing. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of just like a, a really fast COD Warzone was just I don't know how to say it. It's it's just kind of there. It's kind of there. Yeah, it's just kind of there. It's uh it's just the average battle royale, I'd say, probably on the sure. upper, higher tiers. But so the next category would be uh, best art direction. The nominees for those were Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghosts of Tsushima. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Hades, and The Last of Us Part Two. Um, I think Hades is going to win this. I think Ori is going to win this. See, I, I know that both of them are very popular. Uh, Ori might be pulled back only because it was a Xbox exclusive. Not an Xbox exclusive. Did it come out on the Switch? It did. Oh, well, then it did. <laughs> and they worked, they worked the, their butts off trying to port it onto the Switch. And um, that by then, I th I learned from Digital Foundry that the game's graphics and all this was its art style was so complicated. I figured that Microsoft tried really hard on this game, and I feel like that's the reason why they'll probably win this. Yeah, Ori definitely has probably the most unique out of all of these. Um, for Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, and The Last of Us Part Two, I'd say there's not really an art style. It's more of a the most realistic or anime. <laughs> so I don't think any of those three are going to win. It's either going to be Ori or Hades. I don't know much about Hades. I know it was super popular and it's a really good, I think, um, uh, the third category we have is Best Music. Uh, the nominees for that is Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hades, 
Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and The Last of Us Part 2. <laughs> Most of the games being the same. <laughs> True. The only change is Doom Eternal. Um, I think Doom Eternal is going to win that, uh, but I think it will win by a small margin. All of those games are really good with their music. The Last of Us Part 2 could also win that, I think. Final Fantasy VII Remake has that chance of winning because, of course, there's the nostalgia factor. You know, fans are going to be looking back towards the original themes of Final Fantasy VII and probably get some references back towards it. I feel like there's a bit of a bias towards it, and that's maybe um, a factor into how this might win. For sure. And the bias um, of nostalgia could be its downfall, actually, I think, because it, it's not really original music. I'm pretty sure they had some new original music. I don't remember. Yeah, they, but... it is, yeah, they definitely had some there, but I can almost guarantee... Remastered music, and it's some yeah, of the it's definitely going back themes that it. people have already heard. Um, I think Doom would win only because it's so different than any other games because you never really hear no? hard metal <laughs> rock <laughs> while yeah, you're that's kill- killing like, the only only game that ever comes close is probably Todd, but that's barely anything close in the newest one it's more of like a neon techie soundtrack oh yeah definitely the next category is best narrative uh, the, no- the nominees for that is uh, 13 Sentinels, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, and The Last of Us Part And we both collectively think uh, that The Last of Us Part Two is going to win that. And I can agree on all points. I've ne- we- I don't think either of us have played the game, but it seems like uh, Naughty Dog has, really likes making story-based games. So hopefully it was a strong. huge impact. Yeah, there was a huge impact over the main character, I suppose. And um, I think it did do. I think fans said that it did really well to connect the first game and the second game. But you know, there was a bit of that controversy around the characters' um, sexual orientation and all. But I don't think that ever matters because there was only a small portion of the community that kind of asked um, the developers. Yeah, the Last of Us Part Two going into going into the Game Awards. Um, the replies on Twitter on the Game Awards are always filled with people saying, like, I would say stands of the Last of Us Part Two <laughs> saying, "Yeah, they're gonna win. They're gonna win. We're gonna sweep the award show." I don't think the Ouch. Last of Us is gonna sweep the award show. I think they're at least gonna get two or three awards, maybe. Um, Maybe just sweeping the award show, but there's no way they're gonna sweep the award show. No, I think there's too much controversy and too many people played other games during the year. If there's one game I believe would definitely not make it to the narrative award, it's probably the Final Fantasy VII remake because it's a remake. <laughs> yeah, you could say it's so unoriginal, uh, but it it is technically still original. Yeah, it's technically in a way it's original, but I know they altered the story in some parts of it. Fans are going to know the general plot of the story. Like, why would you praise something like that? <laughs> yeah, and seeing all these awards being uh, being nominated, I can't. I still can't believe I have a PlayStation, so I can play all the games that I want now. Uh, mm. Any any Xbox games that come out, I can play, which is not many. And most of the PlayStation yes. games on this list are actually a part of a a subscription service. So if I wanted to, I could pick it up just to see. I was I was debating on Final Fantasy VII remake. I might just wait till it goes on sale a little bit more. I could just play Final Fantasy VII instead. <laughs> True, the original. <laughs> I don't really like uh, the turn based gameplay though. So. <laughs> RPGs are not for everyone, so... Uh, speaking of RPGs, our next uh, category would be Best RPGs. Uh, the nominees for those are Final Fantasy VII Remake, obviously, uh, Genshin Impact, <laughs> uh, Persona 5 Royal, Wasteland 3, and Yakuza, Yakuza uh, Like a Dragon. I've heard a lot of good things about Yakuza, but I'm, I'm not sure if enough people played that, because I think it just recently came out. Um, Isn't it like a Japanese exclusive, like for a while? I think so, and then it was ported to the Xbox, where the marketing was stayed, but it also came out on PlayStation. I think it was basically the only uh, Series X launch title, you could say. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a little ridiculous. Yeah, that's a little sad. 
but uh, both of us definitely think uh, Genshin Impact could win uh, by pure popularity. Yeah, because they had such a huge impact at launch. Like, you know, okay, sure, people complain that it looks like Breath of the Wild, but so did that one Ubisoft game. Uh, and was it Immortals Phoenix Rising? What was that called? Oh, yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. I came out yesterday. Yeah, Immortals Phoenix Rising also got that criticism anyways. They both did good. Now, I do have to say, though, that even though I haven't played Persona 5R, I have a feeling it's really close behind Genshin Impact. There, there's just some like immense amount of popularity around Persona games, I feel. Um, well, same can be said with the Shin Megami Tensei, but... Like, there's going to be a lot of loyal fans looking towards even just, like, a remaster slash remake of a already popular RPG. Um, remind me, did Personal 5 win any awards? Um, I'm sure they did when it I came think, out. I, I think it did as well. Because that, that game was pretty big when it came out, um, but it became even bigger once Smash uh, showed them. So that's hot t- that's a hot take, but you know I'm right. <laughs> it has potential, but you know, like like we set forth the nostalgia thing. It hurt a lot because of that. And I feel like Genshin just kind of ultimately proved um well actually proved something. It didn't prove that it was the best RPG, but it did prove that it was a very good gacha game, you know, something that wasn't a necessity, but more so for sure. I actually do have some numbers here from Genshin Impact. Uh, before the game's launch, 21.3 million people registered for the game, and oh. then uh, 17 million downloads occurred on launch day. Oh, jeez. Um, and Crazy. apparently that means it attracted more viewers than Fortnite right after be- it became playable. So it got oh. more popular, I guess for like two or three days, but still. <laughs> well, they also happen to have I mean, yeah, they also happen to have, I think, the largest Discord server to date. Larger yeah, than that's true. Minecraft. They, they were recently celebrating about it, I guess, or at least a few months ago. They went really big at launch. So our next category is best VR game. Um, I know that you don't have too much experience with VR, if any. Um, I have a Oculus Quest, and then when I got my good computer this year, I decided, yeah, I'm going to get... Uh, a good game on on a VR. So I decided to get Half-Life Alex. Uh, that's technically the only one I've played out of these this list, but yeah. Uh, the nominees are Iron Man, Dreams, Half-Life Alex, The Walking Dead, and Star Wars Squadron. Um, I think Scar- Star Wars Squadron was kind of almost overhyped, and then not many people bought it because it went on sale for $30 right on Black Friday. It was a very generic space shooter. Like I gotta say, it really it's did a genius a... idea, though. It's a genius idea, but it's been done before in the past. They've had a trilogy full of Star Wars, a trilogy of Star Wars games with the with a very similar concept, also known as the Rogue Squadron trilogy. It's also a space shooter. You also sit in the cockpit. You. Um, also work with teammates, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah. it was down to fail, I feel. But it looks like both of us agree that uh, Half-Life Alex is going to win, and I think that's the most likely candidate there. Um, only because it's gameplay. I, I've i played maybe like 20 hours of it. I'm not even done it. I'm stuck in this horror area. But um, it's it's insane to play. you got to put like r- actual headphones on, uh, you just get immersed in the game. It, it, the it's thing, cr- I, like, it's hard to explain, but it's yeah, so I, I get what you good. Mean. Like it's it's so much better than all the other choices we have here because, like, it's that's what VR is supposed to be. You're, you're supposed to be immersed inside the game. You know, like it, with all these um sounds and your surroundings, you have to be. You have to actually feel like you're inside the game. Feel like something's approaching you or. Uh, you have to do this. Like, there's parts where uh, the zombie head crabs are coming after you, and sometimes they do have some uh, some scary moments. And I genuinely jump and like take my headphones off just to like, holy crap, what just happened to me? <laughs> exactly. That's that's the beauty of VR, and I feel like 
Half-Life has, has done that well. I'm just hoping they get more support for it, or maybe some modders will add some more gameplay. I would like to see maybe a Portal game in the style, because Portal VR would be immaculate. I'm just surprised Half-Life Alex wasn't nominated for Game of the Year. I think uh, that was just stolen from them. Oh, <laughs> You think it, it might really have just been because it. of the the low install base of VR that oh, they couldn't yeah, put as many people, want, people on it. Everyone but wants to play VR. <laughs> that would have definitely been my game of the year, even though I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> mm. Our next category would be Best Action, uh, which is nominated for Doom Eternal, Hades, Neo 2, Streets of Raid 4, and Half-Life Alex. Although Half-Life Alex is a good action game, I think we both agree that Doom Eternal is going to win this. Doom easily wins the action genre. I, I can, like, it's, it's not a question at this point. Being a really, really fast paced, fast paced FPS action is it's definitely something that appeals to a lot more people. I will say I have played um, Streets of Rage 4, 4, and so underwhelming yet overwhelming at the same time. It's it's your it's your it's just your standard beat 'em up. That's all I'm gonna say. Like I haven't gotten that far in the game, but first impressions, it was nowhere as impressive as any of these other games on the list because beat 'em ups can only really go so far before they become all the same. So our next category would be best adventure. It, they call it best action adventure, which is kind of weird, but best adventure adventure uh, would be Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Ghost of Tsushima, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ori in the Will of the Wisps, and The Last of Us Part 2. We're a little bit split on this, actually. Uh, you're, I guess you're voting for Ghost of Tsushima, and I think The Last of Us Part 2 is going to win this. I, well, I'm actually, uh, if I'm being honest, I was a little torn on this one subject, because like, I would have ch chosen between Ghost of Tsushima, Spider-Man, and The Last of Us, but I had to look through some of the gameplay, and I feel like Tsushima. I don't know if it, it was if it whether it appealed to me most or if it, it it's definitely something different from what we've seen because Miles Morales is kind of just a sequel to well a half sequel to Spider Man. And we've already seen that enough. Last of Us Part Two is the only thing that actually uh, that I think actually rivals it. The Last of Us Part Two is an is almost not even an adventure game. I would say it's more of an action game. Yeah, it's kind of. I guess it depends. And Assassin's Creed is Assassin's Creed. What do you expect? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say they, that they've too. Only <laughs> ever, they've only ever evolved their formula. They've never really changed it as much. Yeah, Ghost is definitely probably the biggest adventure game there, um, other than Assassin's Creed. But I don't think they ever win anything for that. Um, and the gameplay for Ghosts is really good. So I think that, that probably will take the cake, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. The second to last category would be Best Family Game, or should it be named Best Nintendo Game? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, there are some questionable choices on this list, I'd have to say. <laughs> the nominees would be Animal yeah. Crossing New Horizons, uh, Crash 4, It's About Time, Fall Guys, Mario Kart Live, Minecraft Dungeons, and Paper Mario, uh, The Origami King. That last choice is so freaking questionable. I really don't Mario understand King. how it's a family game if it's more related to RPG <laughs> than it is a, fam a game that you play as a family or something like that. It's probably almost because it's, it's family friendly, I would say. And that's it. <laughs> it's also a Nintendo game. So. But uh, we both agree that Animal Crossing is going to win this. I think Animal Crossing is going to win this in a landslide victory. It will um, easily win it. Well, because that's the one everybody's played the most of. And Minecraft Dungeons yeah. wasn't even that good. Mario Kart Live, not many people bought it. It was kind of just a gimmick. Fall Guys was, Fall Guys was popular, but now it's not, it was, so it's not going to win. It was, it was, there, was, there was a toxic community, too, wasn't there? A little bit, yeah. It got a little bit too competitive, I would say. 
And the Crash 4, I didn't even hear that Crash 4 even came out, really. I didn't, it wasn't much of an impact. Uh, I, I guess Activision was kind of too focused on COD at the time that they really didn't give much care for Crash 4. <laughs> and then Paper Mario, where does that even fall in? Like, I swear, that, I, I'm, still, I'm still wondering what, how the heck it got into this, this nomination and not RPG. <laughs> Heck, even even uh, music too, because I found myself really enjoying the Paper Mario music. Yeah, and that's why we've <laughs> nominated it for uh, best music in our category. Because yeah. the, the music in it, it 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 bangs. It's it's really good. It's made, it's, it's written to be nostalgic. It's it's definitely written to be nostalgic. So you know, ten years later, if you go back to this game, you're gonna remember what you hear in the game. And the moment we've all been waiting for, our predictions for Game of the Year for 2020. <laughs> the nominations are Animal Crossing New Horizons, Doom Eternal, The Last of Us Part 2, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, and Hades. And uh, it looks like both of us agree that Animal Crossing New Horizons could win us. Yep. <laughs> I think I I do have two guesses. It's it, it's really for me. It's in between Animal Crossing: New Horizons or The Last of Us Part Two. I I have to be honest with you. I I'm inclined to say that too because of the impact of both games. Like The Last of Us Part Two had so many nominations this year. It's so weird because they're such different games, and they had such different impacts to different people. Um, in a way, I think there's some overlap, but it the uh, they came out in different times of the pandemic, even so, yeah. uh, they were almost perfect timing, uh, especially for Animal Crossing. Everybody, literally, uh, what is it, 16 million copies sold of Animal Crossing in the first half of the year? So, it's so always out of star, <laughs> and that means it could potentially get millions of votes. Um, and then The Last of Us Part Two, I think, sold like four, or five, or six million copies in its first launch day, which was could, pretty. It was uh, highly anticipated for sure. <laughs> but I think that the uh, the the mixed messages to The Last of Us Part Two could be its downfall, and it could, yeah. well, let's say, split the vote. Then again, there's also Animal Crossing and how slow content. Cause the community to drop the game. I think Especially when people go back to their memories and it's like, okay, which game did I play the most of this year? I think Animal Crossing comes to mind first. Animal Crossing definitely ha- it has the most impact for sure. <laughs> and that would be incredible for Animal yeah. Crossing to win Game of the Year at the biggest award show of the year. <laughs> that would just be the weirdest thing ever. It gets, the stand, it gets the stand alongside Breath of the Wild. That's oh, true. Man. That's so weird. <laughs> Masterpiece so about of the years right next to Animal Crossing. You think about it though, 2017 still it's still the best year for Nintendo at the Game Awards because they had two Game of the Year nominations. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't think anything's going to beat that unless they put out Breath of the Wild <laughs> 2 <laughs> and Metroid Prime 4 in the same year. Oh. <laughs> If there's one thing for certain for this year, though, I, I, I hate to say this, but Doom Eternal is probably not going to win. Yeah, because, unfortunately. Um, well, Animal even though they had a little shared hype, you know, Isabel and Doom Guy, the, the two communities getting together for same release date, um, Animal Crossing kind of just left Doom in the dust, unfortunately. And Mainly because it was delayed. It was for well, okay, that was only the Switch version, though. That's kinda, true. Switch version was delayed, but the actual game itself was released on the same day. And unfortunately, you know, Animal Crossing basically killed it. At least for a lot of people. And Hades? Well, I guess that it might fall into the same situation as Celeste. Let's be honest, it's an indie. Like, what can you expect from an yeah, indie? It's an indie it, game, they can only yeah. go so far. 
it's not much of a marketing push. I think nowadays it's almost like the Oscars, how uh, whichever game the most people saw or the most people mm-hmm. played is most likely going to win or are in the right. running. And Hades kind of just had a good launch. It's a fantastic game, but not many people played it. So I don't think it's going to win. I was stuck on, like, what, two platforms compared to all of them? Which was definitely yeah. a factor. So same can be said with Final Fantasy VII Remake. It was, it was hyped up for sure. But it's just a remake. It's not... It's going to change some parts of the original Final Fantasy VII, but it's it doesn't doesn't have as much potential as something original. When I initially saw the nominees, I thought Final Fantasy VII Remake came out in 2019. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, like 2020 late. has been this long? Well, I mean, okay, to be fair, uh, Super Smash Bros. was out for like an entire year. And, got, and that got nominated for yeah. Game of the Year. I think, actually, I do want to mention somewhere in the nominations... Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is nominated for something. It was, but I forgot what it was. It, but it came out last year, 2019, like November 19th or something. Oh, that's that probably why, because it, it, people didn't have enough time to vote for it, so they just decided to vote it for next year, or for this year. I don't remember when the voting came out for the things. It's usually like the last week in November or something. That's why I feel like Cyber Warriors Age of Calamity is going get to get some form of nomination in 2021 because it came out on the due date of nominations, which uh, wasn't a smart plan, but, you know, Nintendo, it's Nintendo. They, they do what they want. It is the entire reason that Smash Brothers was not nominated. Smash Brothers Ultimate wasn't nominated for as many awards. I think with Smash Brothers Ultimate, came out like two weeks or three weeks earlier. Came out, it came would have out been... one day. It came out the day after the Game Awards, I think. Oh, yeah. Basically the day off, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think it would have been nominated for Game of the Year that year. But it, it was just so big. The hype was there. I think it could have won because of the hype, but maybe not because it, of the game. Yeah. The game itself was underwhelming. It is a fighting game, so. <laughs> it's a fighting game. <laughs> well, uh, we'll go on to our wishes for uh, announcements. So every year, uh, Jeff Keenly says, oh, we're going to have so many world premieres at this game awards. It'll be insane. <laughs> uh, Mind will be blown or whatever. He uses all kind of words. And, 2019. Uh, pretty much. And uh, yeah, I think that last week... <laughs> Last week's episode, we mentioned that uh, we think uh, Doom Guy could be announced for Smash Brothers. Yes. Um, since then, there hasn't been much more information on that, uh, hmm. but we still want it to happen. Yeah. Just as a recap, um, basically, Dakota found this uh, one tweet that said it's kind of matched up, basically. Because today, on this recording, December 8th, was the release date of the Switch version of Doom Eternal. And on the Game Awards, which is December 10th, it's also Doom's anniversary. And because of those dates line up, it's almost no question, it's, it's almost without a doubt that Doom Guy will be revealed at revealed for Smash. Kind of, kind of in the style of Joker, I guess. I think it'll probably be like, oh, here is uh, a gameplay video of Doom, and then he kills <laughs> he kills something, and he like destroys the brain or something of something, and then the envelope shows up, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the main the main villain or something is like, oh, you think you're all powerful here, and then he hands you an, an ambulance, and he's like, what? <laughs> he's in Smash? <laughs> Travel <just> realities. <laughs> Hopefully they have fun with it. It'd be even crazier if they brought Isabel, if Isabel was the one who inflated Doom Guy. Oh my gosh, you're right. You're so right. Oh yes! Please! 
<laughs> Doom guy is gonna get like incoming transmission. All of a sudden, you see Isabel on the screen. <laughs> You've been invited to Smash. <laughs> Come join me, friend. Boom, boom, boom. I could totally see that. Oh my. <laughs> That could totally make so, up for a like, bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if that's, <laughs> I I really hope that's how it goes. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, <laughs> other world premiere uh, world premiere wishes are uh, maybe we could see some information from Bayonetta three because it has been three years yeah. since the teaser trailer for it. And they said nothing about... Well, they did give updates, and I think they said they were almost done. Yeah, every three months that. or so, there's always just this little update from my Nintendo that says, uh, like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, g- development is going well, it'll be good, the game is coming <laughs> along, uh, even through a pandemic. It's like, come on, just give us something. <laughs> I don't care that it's going well, give me some gameplay. Give me some news, give me some tra- trailers, give me some teasers. I guess this, this is for any game possible, so yeah. <laughs> I bet every fan so. pretty much just says that to anybody. Mm-hmm. Including The Elder Scrolls Six, which we've been waiting for 10 years now, pretty much. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is crazy. Yeah, it's kind of like another, it's kind of like waiting for another GTA. Oh, jeez. Oh yeah, that's true. I think if we're going to get anything close to the Elder Scrolls 6, GTA 6, uh, even like other massive games that they keep promising, it's going to be mm-hmm. a tiny teaser trailer. I think they're going to wait till like E3 2021 just, if that happens. They just put the logo and then they say in development and then. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> millions Maybe of a millions. Quote from a character or something. <laughs> yeah. So at the Game Awards, every year they always have um, really high-profile celebrities coming to the stage. Even if they have no relation to the Game Awards, uh, an example last year is Vin Diesel and uh, her whole really. star. Oh, that was on LG3, never mind. Uh, they came up on stage and they showed a trailer for, uh, uh, what is it? What is it called? Yeah, it, was, it was a... I think it was a mixed promo between Need for Speed and Fast and Furious. Uh, yeah, it was something wrong. It was something wrong out yet. There. <laughs> Fast and Furious 9 hasn't even came out yet. Is that crazy? <laughs> yeah. In the but, uh, yeah. Um, this year, they confirmed that Reggie is going to come back for, I'm pretty sure, like the f- fourth or fifth year in a row, which is he fantastic. <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter, he's really active on Twitter. And he loves uh, integrating with himself with the community. And he always talks about how his time at Nintendo, and then he goes and talks to uh, kids at universities, which is really cool. And you can even sign up for them for free if you wanted to. So that's really incredible. Yeah. And uh, usually what Reggie does is he comes up on stage, and then he talks about, oh, how gaming brings everybody together. Uh, his time at Nintendo was super good. And then he announces something and walks off stage. Good guy, Reggie. <laughs> and that's pretty much what's going to happen for him again this year. I yep. don't really expect anything more, but... Just expect some Reggie meme to appear, and that's that's that. Exactly. He'll just do a thumbs up, and that'll be a meme for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another person that's going to be on is Brie Larson. She's going to be a oh. hunter, so she'll probably be saying, oh, this game won or whatever. Um, I think there could be a connection between her and Nintendo. Uh, my current Absolutely. theory <laughs> is uh, she's going to announce that she's the voice of Samus in <laughs> Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> the internet Back. would be caught ablaze, but in a good yep. way. <laughs> Not in a good way. He's definitely going to be Nintendo, though. Like, I have a feeling. It's because of the Animal Crossing. Uh, well, it's because of her love for Animal Crossing and Nintendo as a whole. She really is a gamer. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's, that's really true. She even started a YouTube channel. 
I haven't seen much of it, but I think she did a island tour, which was kind of cool. Yeah. She has two Switch consoles. She has both the uh, regular and the Switch Lite as well. Well, what she got paid for uh, the Captain Marvel plus uh, Avengers could literally set her for life anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> speaking of Marvel uh, actors... That's true. Uh, Tom Holland is going to be at the award show. And specifically in the reveal photo on Twitter, he's uh, they used the photo from the teaser trailer, or the teaser image, for the Uncharted movie that he's starring in. So it's almost it's almost guaranteed that we're going to see an Uncharted tra- trailer, which would be fantastic. Oh, now that you mentioned it, what if they were to, what if they were to showcase an Uncharted game? I'm gonna say I doubt it. I think they want focus. You know how movies I'll usually come out yeah. mixed with a game, and usually the the movie sucks and the game is mediocre. Oh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I guess I suppose you're right. I think no, that would be a stupid idea for Naughty Dog to make a game connected to the movie. I think they need the movie to be on its own feet. Even though it can't really be because it's supposed to be a prequel to the games oh, yeah. when he's like 20 years old. But they already showed yeah. his origin story in like Uncharted 3 or 4 or something. So it doesn't line up very well. That's unless they want to reboot the entire series. <laughs> with wow. starting with the movie. People would literally murder developers. I'm not joking. <laughs> we'll, we'll murder. <laughs> that sounds bad, I mean, but I'm not people joking. Already called, people already called out Tom Holland because he's too young. Yeah. He's supposed to be like 20 years old in the movie. I think he's like 24 in real life. So People, picture him, as Peter, people picture him as Peter Parker. So what do you expect? Yeah. I watched uh, his new movie, Devil All the Time. The, the Netflix movie. It's a really dark movie. Uh, I don't recommend it to anybody who has like a weak stomach. Uh, but okay. the entire movie, I could not get the picture out of my mind that he was Spider Man. <laughs> it was so hard to do it. In his accent, I know he's British in real life. He had like a Southern accent. It just didn't work for him. Something's something's wrong. I think he branded him himself too much to Spider Man. Okay. Yeah, he's gotten way too much Spider-Man influence because of that. Ouch. I just, I'm just hoping he stays Spider-Man for like a really long time, and they age him up really slowly or something, and then he eventually gets to where like, oh, we're, we're probably like 40 years old, and he's playing the character. <laughs> probably <laughs> will. Cause... He's like 50, which would be super cool to see. Probably will, because he makes mad cash for both. Disney and Sony. Unless they kill him off in like Spider Man 20. <laughs> oh my gosh, they kill him off. Um, that's. They kill that's off Spider Man, imagine. Yeah, kill off Spider Man. Literally, almost pretty much the centerpiece of Marvel when you think about it. Thank you for joining us in our predictions for the Game Awards. We'll be streaming the awards live on our YouTube channel starting at 7 p.m. EST. We would also love it if you could follow us on Twitter and listen to future episodes on Spotify and iTunes. Join our Discord for insight on future episodes, and see you next time on the Switch Clicks podcast. <laughs>